Hi, this is Vernon with Engineer LLC. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a Windows Forms application on Windows 8 using Visual Studio 2012 and C Sharp. Let's get started. Windows 8 was released to manufacturing a couple weeks ago and Visual Studio 2012 was published more recently along with the availability of Windows 8 for developer subscriptions. This basic demonstration shows that Windows Forms application development remains essentially the same as in earlier environments. Okay, so what we have here is a fresh installation of Windows 8. The start menu has changed a bit. It fills the screen as you can see here. We find an icon here to give us the desktop. We can invoke the start menu in three ways. By bringing the cursor down to the lower left hand corner or by bringing the cursor to either of the corners on the right side and then clicking the start menu icon. There are plenty of demonstrations on YouTube about details of how to navigate the new user interface on Windows 8 so I won't get into that. But over here we have the list of applications that were not included with the basic OS installation. So let's open Visual Studio 2012. Now that we've opened Visual Studio 2012, we see the start page. So what we want to do here is create a new project. Let's create a new Windows Forms project using the C-sharp language. We don't want it to give it the default name, and this project is going to show the basic opacity control so we'll name it something relevant. But now we have our project and this is our solution explorer over here. I'm going to start by renaming the form. By renaming the form all the derivative resources also get renamed as well. So let's do some basic editing of this form to bring it in line with what we want to see. First off, I'm going to change the font of the form. And now I'm going to change the size of the form to 500 by 300. Let's give it a name that makes sense a couple more things to the form. I'm going to change the border style to fixed 3D. Okay, now that we have the basic form in the size that we're looking for, let's add a descriptive label to the form. We'll do some basic housekeeping to the label. Now we have a descriptive label. Let's add some sort of a control to the form. The first control that we're going to add to the form will be a trackbar control so that we can use the trackbar to control the opacity. So we find the trackbar control and we add it to our form. Now we need to do a little editing to this one here. Let's give it a descriptive label. It's going to control the opacity, so let's call it trackbar opacity. We will also want to give it a range of more than 10, so we'll give it a range of 100. We'll make the length 400. Position the trackbar appropriately. And there we have our trackbar. Just to recap, our trackbar has a length of 400, a range of 0 to 100, and a change level of 1 increment per tick. So let's uh, run the program here and see what it does. Here's our program. And there's the trackbar moving. And just like the descriptive label in the program says, it does nothing. So let's make it do something. Let's make it change the form's opacity when we move the trackbar. So how do we do that? Well, let's double click on the trackbar here. Okay, so to do that, we will add the form's property opacity 
to the action that takes place when the trackbar scrolls. Now theoretically the value of the trackbar will change the opacity of the form now. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Oh! Well now it does something but not exactly what we want. Why? Does nothing until we get way down to the bottom. Ah, hmm. Maybe that's a clue. Well, we need some visibility on what this value is, don't we? So let's do this. Let's create another label. I'm just going to copy the existing label. It makes it quick. And I'm going to call this label the um, value title the contents of this label is just going to say value and then I'm going to copy this one again and this one is going to show us the value so how do we do that well we first we'll give it the name label value and we will add some code here to update the value of the label with the value of the trackbar Okay, so let's run it again and see what happens. Aha, we get some, look at that. It's a hundred up there. We get down to here and it's two, it's one, and pow, it disappears. Aha, hmm, now we're getting somewhere. Now why would that happen? Let's have a look. Now if we hover the cursor over the form's opacity, we see that it's looking for a numerical type double. And then if we hover it over the value of the trackbar, we see that it's a numeric type integer. Well, let's look into that a little further. The opacity property is expecting a value of 0 to 1.00. What we need to do now is divide the trackbar value by 100 before we apply it to the form's opacity property. We'll start by adding a temporary variable to hold the result of the division equation. Now we will apply the trackbar value divided by 100 to the temporary variable. Now instead of attempting to apply that integer variable to the form's opacity value, we will apply the temporary variable double to the opacity value double. One more thing before we start. We don't want that trackbar to start out at zero, otherwise we won't be able to see the form when we first start the program. So let's change the initial value of the trackbar to 100. And let's see what the program does now. It's still not working. Oh, look at that. We didn't divide the trackbar value by 100 yet. Now let's try it. There we go. That's better. There we are the program that does nothing. Now it's doing something. Let's spruce it up a little bit by adding the percent symbol here so that when we change the value we see a percentage rather than just a plain number. Well, that's all very nice but uh, let's do a little more. Let's automate this program. Let's give it a timer. For now we'll leave it disabled when the program starts and let's give it a button. We'll call this button auto text value of automatic. Now let's give the timer some sort of action to work with. We'll need another global variable for that timer to distinguish whether or not the value is going up or down. For that one we'll make a boolean value called up and let's give it a default value of false. Now in the timer what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to increase the value of the track bar by one if up is true or decrease it by one if down is true. Now for the button 
we want to give it some logic that tells us to either enable or disable the timer and update the text on the button appropriately. We'll also need to add some logic to determine when the trackbar is ascending and when it's descending. We change the direction of the up variable each time the trackbar reaches its stop. Let's see what it does. Okay, the manual still works. So now we get automatic scrolling of the trackbar and we see that the value changes as we wanted it to. And we can change it back to manual. And there you have it. Opacitator, the program that does nothing. This has been a demonstration of Visual Studio 2012 on Windows 8. This is Vernon from Engineer LLC. Thank you for watching.